So here's Article 1, 2, and 3. Article 1 says the style of this confederacy, confederacy, you know, grouping of, of states all together, the style of this confederacy shall be the United States of America. Article 2, each state retains its sovereignty, its freedom, its independence, and every power, jurisdiction, and right, which is not by this confederation expressly given to the United States central government, the federal government, Congress assembled. So Article 2 just says the states are going to be very powerful still. They remain uh, in control of their sovereignty. Article 3, the state, the said states hereby severally enter into a firm league of friendship. Sounds like a Care Bear movie sequel or something. The firm league of friendship. The said states hereby severally enter into a firm league of friendship with each other for their common defense. Right at the top of the list, common defense. They're trying to win a war right now. So that's top, top of the list of the reasons why they're doing this. For their common defense, the security of their liberties and their mutual and general welfare, binding themselves to assist each other against all forces offered to or attacks made upon them or any of them on account of religion, sovereignty, trade, or any pretense, whatever. So what's the purpose of this document? Is it to replace the United States Constitution? Nope, hasn't even been written yet. This is the first draft of that, basically. Uh, to create a treaty between sovereign nations. To create a union of states that will work together as one nation. Hmm? Maybe. Or to declare the American colonies independent from Great Britain. What do you think? Well, it's it's not to replace the Constitution because it hasn't been made yet. To create a treaty between sovereign nations. Uh, if you're thinking like down the road, Treaty of Paris between Britain and the United States, this does make it possible to do that. But is that the initial intention? Uh, no. The initial intention is we're in the middle of a, the beginning stages of a war. and uh, We want to, to be able to come together to work as one. It's to create a union of states that will work together as one nation. So that's the third one. And it's not to declare the American in independence because the Declaration did that already. So that's guy right there. And we move on. Only read the section that's highlighted. Which statement best describes the relationship between the states? People can move between states with special permits. People can trade between states but are encouraged to only support their home state. People can escape punishment if they flee to another state. Or people can move and trade freely between states. Article 4 says, you know, the better to secure and perpetuate mutual friendship and intercourse among the people of the different states in this union, the free inhabitants of each of these states, paupers, vagabonds, and fugitives from justice exempted, accepted, shall be entitled to all privileges and immunities of free citizens in several states. And the freedom of each state shall free ingress and regress to and from any other state and shall enjoy therein all the privileges of trade and commerce subject to the same duties, impositions, and restrictions as the inhabitants thereof, respectfully. What do you think? It is good. People can move and trade freely between states. So the states are very separate. However, you can move between them and trade between them freely as if they were one. You can't escape the law because you go to a different state. You, know, you go from Indiana to, to Illinois, you don't have to show a passport or anything. Uh, same laws apply to you no matter where you go for national laws. Okay, the purpose of Article 6 is to what Article 6 says, no state without the consent of the United States and Congress assembled shall send any embassy to or receive any embassy from or enter into any conference, agreement, alliance, or treaty with any king, prince, or state. Skipping down a little bit, Section 3, no state shall lay any imposts or duties which may interfere with any stipulations and treaties entered into by the United States in Congress Assembly. Purpose of Article 6 is to, what do you think? Would it be give Congress more power than the state providing for in religion? Correct. Because you don't want states having the power to make alliances with other nations and work with other nations directly and supersede the central government 
wouldn't be good. You know, what if you have Georgia saying like, we want to stay loyal to Britain. And then you have Massachusetts saying, well, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and ally, ally separately with France. It's like having political parties based on nations that, that you're allegiant to. Not good. George Washington and the Washington farewell address. We're, we're, we're skipping ahead here. Washington, he's, he becomes president. He's the first president ever. We have him two terms, and then he steps down. And is like, I'm done. Sets a president, precedent for all future presidents. Two terms, and you're out. And right when he did that, he delivered his farewell address. And in that address, he says, don't have political parties because it's not good. It causes you know mistrust between each other. It causes factions to get really heated. And ultimately, you know, not not agree on stuff that's going to help everybody. And then he also says, don't ever ally with foreign nations, because then everyone's going to be pulled apart when there's a war. And another if, if, you, if people go to war among those nations, then we get sucked in. But it also makes us start to care about the interests of that nation. Now, what if you got Massachusetts caring about France and trying to do something to help them? And then Georgia trying to go with Britain. It's going to pull us apart. So any kind of foreign alliances or agreements have to be between the central government and the, the foreign power, not the states. Makes sense. Article 7, when land forces are raised by any state for the common defense, all officers of our under the rank of colonel shall be appointed by the legislature of each state respectively by whom such forces shall be raised or in such manner as such state shall direct and all vacancies shall be filled up by the Senate, which first made the appointment. All officers under the rank of Colonel shall be appointed by the legislature of each state respectively. When land forces are raised by any state for the common defense, which of the following statements about the defense of the United States is true. The states will create and train armies, which can be used for the common defense. States must pay for all costs of the war within their borders. States shall defer all responsibilities in creating and training armies to the national government. What do you guys think? Adam, do you have a – you seem like you maybe have an answer? No, it's not the middle one. So we eliminate that. Between the first and the third. So either the states will create and train armies which can be used for the common defense or the states shall defer all responsibilities in creating and training armies to the national government. You know, I, I'm, if I would have extended this highlighted area a little bit more to the left, which I wish I did, read that part. When land forces are raised by any state for the common defense, all officers of under the rank of colonel. That should make us figure out the difference. That's right. So number one, or uh, A, well, first one, the states will create and train armies which can be used for the common defense. That's a problem. In Shays' Rebellion, coming up, Daniel Shays, this poor farmer, owes a lot of taxes. He's actually also owed money by the government. He 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 was a general during the revolution. Supposed to he's supposed to be being uh, collecting some some pay from the government for his his work as general, and a lot of people are. It's not coming through. You know why? Because the articles did not allow for collecting taxes indisputably from every state. It was it asked for, for taxes to be collected and given, but it had no kind of executive power to enforce that. So states weren't giving taxes. There was no money to pay back people like Daniel Shays. Daniel Shays gets angry, starts a rebellion, and Shays' rebellion, very famous for being the reason why the articles are thrown out. I mean, that's kind of like the last straw. We find out we can't put down a rebellion on our own soil because we don't have a national army because the Articles of Confederation just it didn't, it didn't make one. So who ends up putting down Shays' rebellion? State of Massachusetts, their militia puts it down. It should have been a national army, 
that intervened, but it was a state militia. Uh, so the states will create and train armies for the common defense. What is the Constitutional Congress's overall purpose in this document? Is it to create an effective Confederacy government that has the power to win a war? Is it to overrule unruly states' rights with a strong federal government that will enact order? Is it to create three branches of government that will check and balance one another? Is it to limit confrontation among the newly formed states by removing their sovereignty? Removing their sovereignty. It's a tough one. Let's eliminate D because they, it did not remove the sovereignty of the states. In fact, it supported that states still had sovereignty. Sadie? To create an effective Confederacy government that has the power to win a war. Yes. It states the very first thing in the list of, of objectives is to create a common defense. And right now, they just started a war. That's the number one thing they need, common defense against the British to fight in this war. So the Articles of Confederation, mainly to create an effective Confederacy government that has the power to win a war. And finally... Which quotation from that document most directly supports this answer? The first one. The said states hereby severally enter into a firm league of friendship with each other for their common defense, the security of their liberties and their mutual and general welfare. Boom. All right.